decided my sewing chair. Hi, Robin. Hi, Catherine. Hi, Linda. Oh, thank you, Jenny. So I printed out the handbag size. Um, if you guys watched the Trailblazer video, you'll know that I did not print that one correctly. Um, so I made sure that the measurements are correct on this one. Um, bag lining bottom. Okay. That is literally the same size. cut this out as quickly as possible. I realize it's probably pretty boring to watch, especially if you're watching this after the fact. Glad you could catch us live too. Um, I will throw out there that I'm not feeling amazing. It sounds thick. Um, I am using it's a bag that I'm really gonna like. I tend to print it on cardstock, and then if I make enough of them, people request them, then I'll order templates. <laughs> right, Cindy. We'll watch you clean a bathroom, it's fine. Yeah, I don't, I just have such a weird migraine. Ugh. But like, not bad enough. I don't know, I just can't lay in bed. I'm, I can't. Can't do it. Um, yes, Decaville Heavy can be made by Pellon. I am not an expert, but I would say it must be the weather, but you're not around me. But you're up higher, so it could be the weather spent the whole day in bed. No, there's nothing wrong with it. I'm just like, I've had worse migraines. I will get through it. Um, so I have some fabrics in front of me. Oh, um, my husband was using my iPad this past weekend and it, it's drained of battery. So I'm letting the charge and then I'll definitely show you guys a picture of the bag. Especially since I need to look at the pattern to know what I need. Handbag size, lining top. Um, what I need to cut. <laughs> yeah, you have to keep going. Yep, the weather will do it. So yeah, this is just cardstock that I bought from uh, Target, and I have a feeling I'm gonna make more than one of these bags, especially since I've got it printed right. <laughs> Looks like it's gonna, oh, that's back. I'm just gonna get everything cut out and taped together and then figure out what fabrics I want where. Um, I only have a little bit of this fabric that I wanted to use, so I'm gonna color block vinyl with it just have some fun. Some of my pattern pieces are kind of hard to read. Maybe I should reprint them. Um, but I just reuse cardstock that I've accidentally printed on, like orders. One time got printed on cardstock and I was like, no. So I'm just reusing it. First time I caught you live. Oh, thank you. Hello to New Mexico. Hi, Tammy. 
main zipper closure panel. Cool. going to use that cut seven by three point seven tuck and then what is this handbag exterior front and back top panel gonna need that Bag size, exterior front bottom panel, exterior front and back middle panel. So it kind of seems like this one's going to come together similarly to the Trailblazer. Um, kind of how things are sectioned off, so that's fun. Um, you could, I, I'm not the pattern designer, but I'm guessing you could also, if you didn't want to do like the front pockets or something, you could just make two back panels. Or if you didn't want to add any of that, you could just use two lining panel pieces as well if you wanted it to be just like the shape without any intense pockets, etc. So just throwing that out there. Bottom. Let me grab some tape really quick. Of course I have hot pink slippers on. Why wouldn't I? <laughs> so if you guys are new to like cutting and taping patterns, something I like to do um, is kind of leave a little bit of excess on the bottom, cut it at a trapezoidal shape so that when you overlap them, you've got a little bit of stability underneath. Um, and I think Carissa of Needle and Anchor does that with her patterns, actually. She'll like include that. is my gusset and I'm trying to decide if I want to cut it out of foam or Decaville light um, I might do Decaville light on the side panels with vinyl and then do foam on the main panels exterior front bottom panel darn that's actually what I was hoping to use Ooh, it might be just enough let me just cut off a little bit so this little piece of fabric here I had um, kind of to fill in some yardage when I ordered from Spoonflower a while ago and I thought um, the Davina might be just what I need so I cut off as much as I could but I'm keeping in mind that seam allowances are a thing so I can kind of cut a little bit extra for that. So in case you have some fabric that you're kind of fussy cutting or something, keep that in mind. Ah, it's gonna be perfect. Sweet. So this is the exterior front bottom panel before I get ahead of myself and cut the wrong thing. Okay, so you could trace it out if you wanted to. I'm not going to, this is how I cut interface. So I just add these hair clips. These are from Sally Beauty or Amazon. And I cut around carefully. So 
sorry. I'm just really excited how perfectly that piece fit. <laughs> so it was fate. So this is the bottom portion. <laughs> I'm doing three things at one time. I'm with you. Uh, so this is from Bagstock. Yes, thank you, Inga. One foam into your slip pocket. Okay. So I'm going to add this to a pile. I need to cut out um, interfacing and foam. So one thing I like to do, if you don't have a template you're using a paper pattern, is I'll add a piece of like packing tape to then use a dry erase marker to like mark off what I've already cut and kind of keep myself on task um so that's just kind of a little tip just a little piece of tape and then you can keep yourself in check with what you need to do especially with something super involved but i do know that she has um little cutting labels included in her pattern so feel free to do that okay so this is the middle panel this is my front and back top panel cut to exterior exterior front and back okay so i'm just kind of making the pattern in my head i guess you could say to figure out how i want to color block it because i have a little bit of this hot pink from my punk broidery oh thanks charlie main zipper closure panel so that'll be in the same thing as my side gusset exterior back bottom panel I probably want this to be in hot pink but I also want hmm, exterior front top panel foam interfacing huh I have to tape this together and I know that so let me do that <laughs> uh, we probably won't be sewing this bag live tonight I'd like to film a tutorial for tomorrow since I've done so many lives lately I don't want people to think that's all I'm gonna do um, so yeah. foam interfacing exterior back panel foam interfacing I kind of want to cut the front panel to be just basted onto foam too. I might, I might try that and see how it goes. Exterior front top panel foam interfacing. Yeah, I'm going to do that. Okay. And then I use hair clips to, um, keep my pattern pieces together and Kind of stack them up as I'm done with them and honestly I store my patterns with the hair clips too so I'm just hair clips everywhere <laughs> all right so I'm gonna go ahead and start with what I know that I need to cut out of this hot pink I feel like I'm all over the place right now but it's okay handbag size connector cut to exterior I'm guessing that's for crossbody Okay. Lining. I know I need lining for these. So that's my lining pile. All right, checking on comments. Um, how do I store patterns? I actually to keep patterns in these from Ikea. Under my heating, heating station, <laughs> my heat press, but then all of my templates are in there. I should take stock in them, yeah. I actually thought about um, stocking hair clips, like for people to purchase, um, but I wanted to find them in rainbow. And then I was like, no, stop. <laughs> trying to watch and gather up supplies for sewing the up. Aw, that's fun though. <laughs> right? I know, it'd be crazy. Okay, so this is the exterior back bottom panel, and I definitely want this to be hot pink. 
So I am laying this on the straight edge of the vinyl and I'm gonna just take a pen. Not that one though, I'll take this one. And I'm just going around the edge of the vinyl and I'm using a really light hand when I go through the center mark. You could also choose to just do like a little tick mark up on the sides. Now I know they could exist and I need them. Yeah. All right, somebody message me to remind me and I'll try and find a supplier in Alibaba. I'm just going really slowly around the outer edge. And if you're working with a limited amount of vinyl, it could be best to just mark everything out first and like write what everything is. So this is the exterior back bottom, but make sure that you're writing within your steam allowances. Okay, so this needs exterior woven interfacing. I'm not adding any woven interfacing because it's vinyl. So I can set this aside. And that is just foam, so I'm going to cut two of these. So what else do we need to cut? I would even pre-order. Yeah, for something like that, I feel like I'd need to do a pre-order. Um, the lining top. Main zipper closure panel. Exterior front and back top panel. So I do think I want this to be the hot pink as well. And then probably I'm going to do black glitter vinyl in the middle panel. So it looks like I have enough. Ooh, I do. And here to cut this out. You can also use the measurements on the pattern. And then I'll put like a little X between my fold line when I'm tracing so that I know not to cut there. I cut two exterior. I don't need woven interfacing and that was it for this piece. So it's going to go in my done pile. I was like, and then I'll grab my scissors. No, that was the whole point of this. Um, front and back middle panel. I'm going to use black glitter. <laughs> yeah. Will this work? Okay. So this is 14 by two. Probably shouldn't have said that, but that's okay. So for this, I am going to use a ruler just because I only have a limited amount. There's one to 14. That's two inches. 14 by two. Do you guys ever have one of those days where like everything's coming together? This is great. Uh, the exterior, exterior, middle, middle, front and back, middle. So then that piece is done. I will go ahead and cut these. There's nothing else I'm going to do with it.
Um, Carla, I have not used the new rulers just yet. Um, they're sitting here. Uh, one of them is just a little bit too big. I didn't want to buy rulers that I already had, so I'm thinking they're going to come in handy more on like the NCW. So I would say that if you don't already have rulers, they're not bad. Um, but if you already have rulers, I wouldn't say you need to like replace them with these, if that makes sense, for the Ar Arteza, Arteza brand. Um, but they're, they're not bad. And I really love those little, um, little, yeah, these little rubber um, non-slip adhesive rings. These are so cool. I've put them on almost every template I've used this week because they just hold in place so nicely. All right, so I'm using my heat press. I'm sorry if you were wondering what that noise is. Oh, thank you, Judy. Um, so when I find it, when I get to doing a lot of interfacing, I will move the camera so that you guys can see that. Okay, so um, would make life easier. Won't, yeah. Does anyone who has this pattern know what size the straps need to be? Never mind. I can look it up. I can look it up. I'm gonna put it on this. Hold, please. Okay, handbag size, front zipper pocket lining, 14 by 14. I got it. Is it in the cutting list that's on one of the pattern pieces? Does it have that? No. Um, the material is still on the heat press, but it's not in it. It's just sitting there. It's fine. Okay, so for the handles, I need 4 by 20. And I am going to be using strap connectors instead of um, just riveting the straps on the bag. I'm not a huge fan of that. All personal preference. It's all good, no matter what you like. So I think I can get my handles, yep, from up here. So I'm using this six inch by 24 inch ruler for my handles. I've just marked out six inches, so I'm gonna move it up two inches from there and mark around it again. Um, so this is what it looks like. I've got a total of three lines. And then I'm gonna move it to four inches from this side to create my center. So now really quickly and easily, I've created four lines total. One, two, three, four, yeah. So this is my center line of the strap. This is where I need to cut. And then this is my center line. It's kind of hard to see, but hopefully you get the picture while I explain. So 
And then I just put little X's where I don't want to cut, basically. Um, so now it looks like I have just enough to do either the main zipper closure panel or the lining top. I don't think I'll have enough for both. Uh, and I think I want to do the lining top because I can do the zipper closure out of waterproof canvas. I don't necessarily want it to be the glitter vinyl because it gets really sticky. So, oh, that's the lining top. Yeah, lining top. Oh, wait. Oh, wait. Is this the same size as another one? It is. Okay. Just checking. So, oof. Fourteen. One, two, three, four. And then it looks like I have enough for my strap connectors as well. So lining, top, lining, top. Yeah, Carla, I would really love to sew this live tonight, but I don't think I'm mentally prepared for a new bag tonight, but I've since I don't do a lot of my cutting and interfacing lately, I get sad <laughs> not doing it because I do love doing it. So on Saturday, I did an Emily bag and I was like, oh, I want to do more cutting and interfacing. Okay, so I am adding strap connectors to this bag. I, like I said, I don't want to put the straps inside the, um, the main panel. I like to use hardware and a lot of it. So I'm gonna cut out four, four inch by two inch connectors. So there's one, and there's two. Oh my Lanta, there's three. And here's four. Sweet. So I'm a little sad that I couldn't get the side gusset panel. I may do it in light pink. I don't know though. Let me grab it and see how that would look. And I kind of want to add a bow to this bag because I'm just like that lately. Yep, it's happening. Oh, it's happening. I definitely, I have more of the black glitter, but I didn't want to add too much glitter. Like I really want it to be a super cute bag. So I think these three together are just gonna be so fun. My lighting is not great. Well, I could turn this on. Oh, it's not plugged in, of course. Can there be too much glitter? I mean, no, but um, for my hands sake, <laughs> there can be too much. And I think this one is from Bodio. Yeah, I'm pretty sure the size seems like it is. So that's gonna be my gusset side panel and the bottom of the bag is going to be black glitter. Oh, I can do my zipper closure out of that. So lining top, I've already got, it's here. Oh, I guess I could do, well, I could do my little handbag side connectors. No, I don't wanna make it a crossbody. I'm sure it would sell better as a crossbody, but sometimes you just have to say, no, it's not gonna be a crossbody. All right, so now I can go ahead and start cutting this out. Yes, you could use a rotary cutter if it works for you. I am not great with a rotary cutter. We all know this. Everyone's always like, you scare me with that. And I'm like, I'm scaring me too, don't worry. <laughs> I'm stupid. 
exterior top. That's going to be cute. Um, wonder what I'm going to do for the landing color. So many options. So I'm going to go ahead and get a project bin started for myself so I don't lose things. Um, so these Doctor Who time, hey, that is way more important. <laughs> um, these are storage carts that I got off of Amazon. They have them at Michael's and stuff. And then these are actually little photo boxes that Michael's has as well. Um, and I just keep all of my hardware in these and little pieces like that and keep them all together. Do I sell kits? No. Um, these are just Fiskars scissors. I buy them because they go on sale often and I drop scissors. So I don't like spending a ton of money on amazing scissors because I'm inevitably going to drop them. It'll just make me real sad. Okay, so lining top. So I'm going to keep that in the bin. Nothing needs to be interfaced. These are my handles. If I had a second pair of nonstick scissors, I would go ahead and add the tape while I'm over here, but I'll just do it later. Okay, so these are my handles into the project bin they go and then this is my little excess fabric I'm gonna stick this in my hardware container as well just in case I need it later or if I want to add a tassel something like that all right so I'm gonna go ahead and grab these pieces get them cut out I will be adding Decaville to the side panels instead of foam. This is not cut on the fold. So I'm using hair clips to hold in place at the bottom along the straight edge. And then I'm just tracing along the outside. And when you're printing with cardstock, it makes it a lot easier to just hold stuff in place. And then I am flipping it around because this piece is kind of curved. Um, putting them in opposite directions is going to save space. Because they can kind of nest together.
Oh, yay, Pam, I'm so glad. Yeah, Ellen is awesome, too. She actually, she sent me an email as a thank you and sent me a $100 gift card, which was absolutely amazing and unexpected. Um, so I actually just recently used it up, and I got some to do a giveaway with as well, because I was like, well, you know, I want to give you my money, but we can pass this along to someone else who may want to try them out. Um, Topsandbobbins.com is where I purchased my templates. They have tons. Mirror image pieces, I'm not sure. Oh. Cut this out, so 13. So yeah, hopefully I'll be doing a giveaway soon. I've been meaning to, especially since we hit 20,000 subscribers. What? <laughs> oh, that's so fun, Cindy. She says she uses egg boxes to keep her projects in. That's amazing. All right, so it says I need to cut four of these out of the lining. So I'm gonna cut two out of my exterior vinyl. Because it's thinner, it's not gonna be too intrusive on my seam allowances. Um, and then I will cut two out of the lining. So there's that, and I need to cut these out of lining, so I'm going to put them in a different pile, and then I'm not going to use this pattern piece, because with waterproof canvas, um, you kind of want to cut a little bit more than you need, especially along those zipper panels, because it can get a little tight once you sew it together. I've been running into that issue a lot lately. Exterior front bottom panel. So I think the last thing I need to cut as far as the exterior is the bottom. So let me grab the glitter black. That didn't take very long. All right. So with the wrong side facing up, I'm just gonna trace this out. That is so exciting. Hopefully I say your name right, Shanna. Shanna said she was selected to be a strike off seamstress. The girl's got glitter. <laughs> you make things look really easy, but they're not. Yeah, this is from FM Stores in Springfield. Um, when I go there, Cindy knows, I load up. <laughs> I make a lot of stuff. Okay, that's the bottom one contrasting, one lining, two woven interfacing, and one foam. Okay. Um, so a strike off seamstress is someone who sews for a um, fabric design company they usually look for people to make things to share with the internet with their fabrics so you get access to fabrics before anybody else does so that's pretty cool and some brands can be pretty picky so that's exciting so there's the bottom that was it that's all I needed So really quick, I'm going to interface while my 
heat press is warmed up and then I'm going to cut out my lining because I don't think that'll take very long. Um, I could do black, I could do light pink. Light pink would be fine, but I think... I'm gonna go with this really pretty teal blue for the lining because it matches the exterior really well. All right, interfacing. I'm gonna grab my woven fuse. This is a pretty, oh, it's pretty fresh. I guess we just used up some of the last of the others. Um, this is the only piece that needs woven fuse. I have a real eye for color. That's good. They were noticing my new bag. Oh, that was cool. I was thinking teal. Yay, Josie! I was like, is it weird that I'm not seeing Josie tonight? <laughs> Hi, Ben. Hi. All right, one layer of woven fuse. And I am just, it is weird. I'm just rough cutting and then I'm going to lay this on my heat press. Let that go for a few seconds. Um, trying to think if I should add any woven interfacing to my vinyl. If you guys didn't know, you can add interfacing to vinyl. You just have to be pretty careful with how long you press it. Um, with woven fabrics, it's not as big of a deal, but you know, I can trim this down. If you can, it does lengthen the life of your um, scissors to not cut interfacing with the same pair. But I'm a rebel. Okay, so this is a canvas fabric that now has one layer of woven fuse, so it feels really nice. I'm digging it. Um, yeah, I won't use my Kai's on interfacing. Don't blame you there. Hmm. No, I think the strap connectors will be okay. I was thinking maybe I need to add some interfacing to the strap connectors, but I think they'll be okay. <laughs> So next I need to grab Decaville Heavy for the bottom of the bag. Okay, so these are ready to go. I'm just going to clip these together now. Yeah, or cut zippers. Ooh, no, do not do that. my rotary for this. Could I grab a smaller ruler? Of course. Am I going to? No. This is not that bad. Okay, so here's my Decaville and I'm going to fuse that. when it appears, yeah. Okay. So laying this face down, I'm heating up my Decaville Heavy on the heat press, waiting for it to feel a little tacky on my fingers. And then I'm gonna lay it in place. This is gonna ensure that it doesn't shift around. And then I'm just gonna give it a few seconds. Glitter canvas doesn't melt as quickly as regular marine, so 10 seconds is usually all you need. And it's fused. Add that to the done pile. That's good. Let's 
good. So these side panels, like I said, I want to add some Decaville Heavy. I don't really want the thickness that foam is going to add. So Decaville Light. I, don't, I think I said heavy. I didn't mean to. Decaville Light. Late to the party. You can never be late to the party. Because an interfacing party don't stop. So this is my lining pile to actually make it. Um, so the Teflon sheet that's on my um, heat press is actually stuck on there with magnets. It does shift, but uh, yeah. I believe the heat press was like $220. If you could only use two types of interfacing, which two would you select? Woven Fuse and Decaville Light? Forever and ever. How many years? Okay, so here's what I'm gonna do. I do not really want this to be within my seam allowances, but I know the bag stock seam allowances are usually like three eighths. So I'm just gonna go ahead and cut this to size, but trim it down a little bit. So I should say I'm going to trace this to size, but kind of trim it a little bit smaller. So this next one that I'm tracing, I'm going to bring it in over the last one by a little bit. Yeah. Well, it'll be fine. It'll work. Oh, half inch on this one. Cool. That makes my life a little bit easier. So, had I known that before I started cutting, um, I would trace one of them out, take a ruler, and measure my half inch all the way around, and then trim it down from there. But I, this is going to be fine. It will be just fine. ideal no but it will work okay so there's my two pieces make sure that hey they're uh, they're pretty close I would get the light not heavy this time oh that's good yeah I got heavy one time when I ordered from Walmart actually and I was like no I didn't want this <laughs> All right, back on the heat press. So this is a really thin vinyl, so I wanna be super careful not to burn it. So what I'm gonna do is heat up my Decaville light on the top of the heat press. You can also do this with your iron, just be very careful. And I use my fingertips mostly. I'm gonna lay it on the pattern piece and just press it for like three seconds. I know that's adhered. I know my vinyl isn't melted. And I'm just going to let it cool. And I have my heat press set to about um, 149 degrees Celsius. So one, two, three. You're good. It may need a second pressing in a minute, but we don't want to put it through much more than that or you'll start to lose the finish. And you can start to lose the finish on your vinyl. So, we don't want that. Oh, thanks, Madeline. All right, going to cut my lining now. Oh, thank you, Shanna. <laughs> I really want it to be pastel, more pastel, but I can't wash it too much or I'll ruin it even more. Um, two contrast, two lining. So I think I've cut out all the exterior that I need. Um, Lisa, I may or may not be sewing this today, but I wanted this to be a film tutorial um, just because I haven't done one of those in a while. And I figured out I can use my Apple earbuds 
um, while watching TV. <laughs> so I can film a tutorial and watch my TV shows. And what's better than that? Okay. So I can turn my heat press off now. Oh wait, I have to cut foam. That's right, but I'm not fusing the foam. Okay. No foam, foam interfacing. Exterior back panel, foam interfacing. I'm just gonna go ahead and cut two. Oh, uh, Noelle, I did not show a pic of this bag. Let me check my iPad. Oh, I don't think, no, I have it in an email. Connor, you are living the dream in my chair. So, Nope, nope. Okay, there we go. So cute. All right, so it comes in uh, two different sizes. Oh, if I turn the brightness down, that will help. Yeah, there we go. So we are making the handbag size. size. Super cute. Yeah, I'm excited. Oh, I guess I do need two of these. Handbag size connector. I don't know. We'll figure it out. Oh, okay. I know how she does that. Great. Great. Cool. And I really, I don't, I don't know why. I love the way the bottom comes together. Um, yeah, you can kind of see it here, but like, it's just got this little bitty, you know, bottom to it. It's so cute. Um, oh yeah, I guess I could show you there too. Right there. Anyway, I think the ruby bag or the rose also has that similar style bottom. All right, cutting out my foam. I'm kind of eyeballing which way would be best. Might be kind of a square. So I'm gonna trace this out as well. I'm using fusible single-sided foam, but I don't think we really fuse it. My pattern is on cardstock, yes. Yeah, it looks like I would have had the same amount of waste of foam either way. Um, but it seems like if you were to cut like the side panels out of foam, you would be able to get it out of the remainder. So I, I really like patterns that are like conscientious of how much interfacing is needed and kind of can be conservative. Hello, Leah, not Leah. Someday an actual Leah is gonna be watching and I'm gonna say that they're gonna be like, no, that's my name. <laughs> I'll be like, well, sorry. I'm going to um, try to 
Oh, yum. Shauna, that sounds amazing. I trace a lot of my clothing patterns on oak tag, which is a bit thicker. Oh, nice. Wow, this is actually bigger than I thought it would be, cutting out this foam. I feel like having printed this one at a smaller size would have been okay, too. But it looks like a really nice size. And of course it's gonna be a little bit smaller. I'll FedEx them. Yes. Show a close up of the clips, yes. Um, and I actually do have a link. Oh yeah, Lisa said there's a 10% code in the Bagstock Facebook group. So if you join the group, um, Bagstock Sewing Patterns, there's a discount code, which is awesome. Um, I always love the look of her patterns and they're so well written, so well organized. Um, I will never be that organized, but if you are someone who really loves organization, you will love her patterns. I wish I had something like a setup. Yeah, rainbow hair clips. <laughs> Just don't stop reminding me. I will look into it, I think you promise. Um, yeah, I actually, I really, really, really want to like go to my old house to take a picture of where my sewing space used to be because I'm fairly certain that it was like, <sighs> yeah, like it was the size of this cutting table ish. No smaller. So it was probably like 58 inches by 36 inches. That was my sewing space. So I had like a sewing table. I had a little place to put things and that's it. <laughs> Cause I love to organize. <laughs> yeah. That's nice. Um, so yeah, just keep working and maybe you'll get there. <laughs> I don't think I've stopped working for the past like six years. <laughs> Yeah, they're the greatest. I love them. Okay, let's cut out the lining. Let's do this. Okay, so I've got this chunk up here. It looks like I can cut out some pockets from, or maybe, <laughs> perfect. picked up clips this evening nice okay so right now I'm cutting out my zipper panel so what I want to do is cut out like an eighth of an inch along the long edges because I know as soon as I sew it together and like um, fold it and whatnot I'm gonna lose a little bit of the waterproof canvas I don't know why it just keeps happening so I cut out a little extra. I only make for fun and my sewing room looks like the Tasmanian devil blew through. Been there. Okay. Um, Lily, yeah, no, I did not have a cutting table. Um, yeah, so I've been making bags for four to six years, definitely like four years doing it live basically, <laughs> which is insanity. Um, so no, I don't, I don't have plans to stop. I've been kind of setting myself up for sewing to be my career. So even if I can't necessarily make handbags to sell like when I go to shows and whatnot um, I can still do this okay so cutting out the gusset bottom panel one contrast one lining got it the more space and storage you have the more stuff you get to fit that's true oh I don't know about a natural um, but that's why I've tried to up like upload some throwback videos so people can be like, oh, you did used to kind of suck at this. Okay, great. <laughs> All right. Exterior front bottom panel. Interior slip pocket. Oh, I love that. Nope. My 
standing bottom. Great. Oh, I can get one of these side gusset pieces. So I am using waterproof canvas to line this bag. And what's great about that is it's going to add some structure, some extra structure to the bag. Um, so I don't have to use interfacing and it makes the bag waterproof. So shout out to you, Lily, for suggesting this. I also need to get that nail polish color you recommended because it looks nice. Aloha. I've been sewing all my life and I'm 50, so it's quite a lot of sewing. Aw. And I learned a lot of my stuff from you guys, so I love it. It takes a village, right? How do you talk to us in work? This is all I do. Waterproof canvas is life. Still going strong. Oh, wow, that's awesome. All right, so I know I need another one of these. So I'm gonna set this over here, but I wanna get some of this larger. Oh, yeah, fleece in this pattern would be really nice. Um, you could use 808 and fleece, you could use Decaville light and fleece, um, but I think for a bag this side, you're gonna wanna add some padding. Oh, cool, Chandra. <laughs> Love that waterproof. <laughs> All right, so let's go ahead and cut out lining bottom. I need two of these. Great. Sounds good. So I've got the fabric on the fold. Um, Shauna, I don't think I have it in me to sew tonight. I'm honestly probably going to um, head upstairs and rest my headache. Oh, sorry, Ben. Maybe repaint my nails. But tomorrow, hopefully, I, um, I think, yeah, tomorrow I have scheduled um, a live video at, I believe, 3 or 2 p.m. Central Standard Time to do a live Q&A. Um, so in my zipper video that I posted last Thursday, um, I put like a form for you guys to ask questions, although I'll be taking questions while live as well. But a lot of people were like, can you just do like a dedicated q and A? I was like, sure, I could do that. Okay, so there's one of those. And instead of cutting out carefully the second lining piece, I'm laying the one I just cut down. And I'm just cutting around that. Because it saves time. So there's my lining. Okay, I want those scissors. They're just new. There's nothing amazing about them. They're just new. Okay. Um, I think 2 p.m. Central Standard Eastern. I think, I don't know, never eat. Okay, so that's three Eastern. <laughs> Leah, I'm sorry that that happened. I had a feeling it would. Um, so when I worked at Hancock, we had ripstop and I was like, Ugh. it's like the sassy satin fabric. Ugh. It's the worst. So this is the interior slip pocket panel. If you weren't using waterproof canvas, you would cut two, but since I am, I'm cutting one and I'm just gonna fold the top edge over. Yeah, never again. Oh, that is such a bummer. So I don't need this piece anymore. This is my interior zipper pocket panel. Um, I'm gonna use 
just a template piece for that that has these little bits so it doesn't shift. Do I need another one of these? Exterior front, cut one interfacing, one foam. Oh, okay, great, don't need that. But I need one of these and then I need to cut a piece that's 14 by 14. Surging the rip stop may help, but I don't think it will because it's just naughty by nature. Second side, that zipper pocket. I, I absolutely think that these non-slip circles are worth it. I was blown away. So when the company reached out to me, um, they were like, here's a list of things we think you'd like. And they sent me like a rotary cutter, a, like a list not actual things and some rulers and these non-slip and I was like I don't want those non-slip things and I was like man give them to me anyway and I was like huh these are so cool <laughs> like of course they're cool it's non-slip I don't know I'm easily amused we should know this by now <laughs> all right cutting this 14 by 14 piece no not yet I'm cutting this second lining gusset piece. all of new tools right can there be enough okay so this is my gusset panel bottom so I'm gonna clip that to my gusset pieces right now so that it's all together oh I need to clip my zipper pocket pieces okay did I actually turn this off yes okay great um, so I just have one more piece of this to cut, and we cut it out in an hour. It's not too bad. I think I get to try one of my new rulers as well. Because I need 14 by 14. Dang, that's 12. Well, why not? Oh, thank you, Gracie. Archer has been intently watching for a hot minute. He is very confused on how Auntie got into the phone. <laughs> Hi, Archer. It's a cat, by the way. Not that that makes him any less important. Okay. Wow. Wow. Okay. So I have this Omni Grip ruler here and I have this one from Arteza that everyone was like, do you actually like it? And for some reason, it's very soothing to my brain right now. <laughs> like this is, there's a lot going on here and this is like someone mentioned, it's, it's just cleaner. It's easier to see what's going on. This one is supposed to be um, like non have like a little bit of grip but this ruler is so old so who knows um but someone was complaining that these don't have any um non-slip features and that's what those little discs would play into um so let's just try it without just to see how it goes so i need a 14 by 14 square so i'm gonna go ahead and just mark my lines. So 
So I know I have one squared corner, measure 14, and create a second squared corner. And then finish this off. Kira, get out of here. I have like three broken Omni Grip rollers. <laughs> one, one chipped ruler. Ah, ah, ah. Two chipped rulers. Ah, uh, ah, uh, ah. Uh, I have three chipped rulers. Why do I keep them? I don't know. <laughs> oh, Rebecca, that is so funny. <laughs> Totally serious. Oh, hot. <sighs> Hello to Florida. Oh, oh, pardon me. So now I have all my little squared squareas. Whoa, is it? Yeah, okay, it's squared. <laughs> I was like, wait. That's it. That was the last piece, as far as I know, that I need for the Divina. It's 8.30, but I just cracked my ruler. Yeah, I break everything. There's not a thing that I won't break. And I will break everything forever. And I'll even break that. All right, well that poor hook is going to break, but not today. Um, oh, that's going to be really nice. All right, I'm gonna show you the reason I'm not sewing tonight. When are you coming to SoCal? When someone plans something. Um, I do use waterproof canvas for most things. I'm, I'm honestly not sure if I'm going to stock any more of the sweatshirts. Um, I have a ton of room food and wine. Let's see. So we've got the regular t-shirts. These are really nice. I don't know if you'd be into um, one of those. To lose some pounds. Fair. Totally fair. Um, but yeah, I th we have tons of these Not Today Bobbin shirts. Um, this one is one of my favorites. It's so soft and comfy. It's a medium. Cell panels instead. I know I need to. Um, and then this is the last one of this green one, which is awesome. I mean, it's an awesome... Um, one size medium. And I finished this bag today, finally. Um, Kennedy, I did not design that fabric. Uh, the customer provided it to me, so I cannot sell it. 
She did send me the file, but I would never, ever in a million years sell it without her permission um, because she did such a good job on it. It's so cool. Okay. So yeah, I, I have all this stuff I need to sew. These are Emily's one leather. That's gonna be so cool. Tammy cut it out for me today. I have to show you guys because it's super pretty and I know Josie's watching. So I've got this really pretty teal leather with this navy TARDIS. And then a Marauder's Map 1 with this brown vinyl. And then a ton of NCWs at some point. Someday. Dude. <laughs> yeah. I'm dead. Yeah, Tammy and I did that earlier. So, I, yeah, I got nothing else. Um, but yeah, tomorrow around 3, I'll do the Q&A if anyone's down for that. Yeah, thanks, Shauna. Uh, the shirts are available on my website. Um, I don't think I can type it in. But then Anne actually just texted me and said that there are, uh, she just posted the wait list for the More You Know workshop. So if you go to simpleartfulstuff.com, she will have that open. Um, which semi-industrial machine would you recommend? Hmm. Thanks, Josie. Such a great line. Oh, thanks. Um, I, I think the Juki TL series are really nice. I know people have luck with like the 2000, the 2010. And then I thought there was something that was like a Juki TL something. Thank you, Kira, for posting that also. Um, yeah, that's going to be fun. Carol likes her 2010. Perfect. Ben, what is your problem? Oh, he's like... Oh, the, yeah, the 220 QVP Mini. Thank you. A lot of people recommend that one. I saw a ton of those at the retreat. But the Janome HD9, I sewed on that. That was pretty cool because it has two ways of being threaded, um, which was pretty neat. But I only made a zipper pouch with it, so I don't know. Another Carol. Um, Charlotte, I got those at Sally Beauty. They're like 1.75 inch um, hair prong sewing clips, but I will update this video with a list of all my affiliate links if you decide to purchase them through um, Amazon. Um, I do have more pens, I just haven't posted them, but if you, anybody's watching and buys a shirt, just um, enter in the notes to sell her that you want a, sh a pen and I'll throw one in. Oh, Walmart has the hair clips too. That's right. Okay. All right. Ben, should we go to bed? He's like, I don't know, but you should get off me. <laughs> I'll buy a size smaller. He likes... Um, I haven't used the conso, so I really can't say, unfortunately. I've thought about doing, like, sewing machine reviews, but that's a lot of money, and I hate to, like, use it and then return it. Now I'm really hoping you put a pen in my order. Kira, I... I don't know if I did. I feel like I did. I, like, circled it because I was like, wait, what? Okay. <laughs> isn't this so cute Cindy made it for me it's got all my fabrics um text 45 thread I think um superior threads has that uh, <laughs> I suggest you bring snacks I will bring snacks we need to know the list of machines you do have. Um, I have the Juki TL2000 and a couple sergers and one for clothing, yes. Out of hope that you still had some. 
I'm pretty sure I did because I was like, all right, Kira, I like you. It's fine. Um, a walking foot is not required to make bags. It does make it easier. Ooh, moving with the 1181, a huge pain in the butt. Uh, not really, but we didn't move that far, so <laughs> it's hard to say. Oh, someone has a console and says it's a beast. Uh, I have cat hair in my mouth. <laughs> um, Cindy Kettleston made this for me. Hopefully I said her last name right. I feel like I did. Um, but she used all the fabrics. It's so cute. I love it so much. And like the poison apples or like the eyes. It's so cool. Ooh, just got the Janome HD9. That is awesome. Kira, I'm sure, yeah, if you tag her, she would. Vita, I'm so sorry. I'm about to hop off now too. <laughs> Bless you. Bless you, child. Um, for sergers, I have the 1034D and the one that Walmart carries, which I think is like a 1634D. They're fine. I haven't had any issues. Just got done feeding horses. <laughs> Darth Vita. Okay, but I am going to go now because my, my head just went. <laughs> Do you guys ever have that where your brain just like clicks off and it's like, no, I'm done. <laughs> So thank you guys for hanging out with me while we made that. It was so fun. Uh, I'm going to go sit in bed. <laughs> Bye.